got to record. Recording is in progress. Okay, we got everything going now. Uh, more so than we would need to. Yeah, okay, we're here. How you doing? Haven't seen you in a week. Well, on this show, I've seen you on the other show, which uh, I'm thinking of bringing to an end because just not enough people are watching it, but a lot of people are watching this. So I, I'm really happy with that. So, hey, listen, uh, let's see here. We have a lot of people waiting to go on. So let's admit them all. Well, admit all. There we go. There we go. Uh, and uh, I should put on my earphones so I can hear you. Although I could probably do it this way and not have to hear you and not have to put on the earphones. Hello, everybody. How are you? Good afternoon. Good. Yeah, I have, I'll put on the earphones. <laughs> You know, I was going to do this without my hat, too, because Marjorie gave me a haircut yesterday. Gee. Yeah, well, you know, what are we going to do? I'm not going anywhere. Nobody's going to see me, you know. So we just cut it all off and let it remain a certain amount of time between now and the next one. She's not here right now because she's at the dentist. She went for a cleaning, which would take an hour. And then she had a two-hour session for the rest of her work with the dentist. Now, I'm trying to figure out what dentist puts you in their chair for two hours. You know, <laughs> you know like, yeah. huh? Wait, a sadistic what? mofo. Wait, say that again because you were breaking up there. I said a sadistic mofo. A sadistic <laughs> mofo, exactly. And that's the sadistic mofo I go to. So that's why I'm not going to her, even though I'm having some problems with the tooth over here. So. My wife goes to a chiropractor and we were at a street fair downtown yesterday and he was there with his little, you know, tent, pop-up tent. And I said, so I walked up to him, I put my hand out to shake his hand. I said, you're the guy that touches my wife every week, aren't you? <laughs> now, do you believe in chiropractic? I, I, don't, I don't, but good, she does. Good. Yeah, she does. Yeah. Marjorie goes to a chiropractor all the time. Swear I don't I've been, been feeding this guy for... 30 years now right yeah you know it's like not chiropractor i think it's chiropractology but that's a whole thing. i think it's called chiropractic <laughs> yeah. no I, I was told that by a chiropractor once yeah i i don't buy it you know then again what, what then again what do they know right <laughs> i knew sure it's called uh, chiropractology alex yeah chiropractology <laughs> very good very good Hello, everybody. Hello, Mandy. Hello, Shecky. Hello, Edward. That's Hello. right. That's right. <laughs> Mike, <laughs> Mike and Candy Chisholm, but we never see Candy. We just see Mike. Uh, we'll Lynn get her La down here one day, buddy. Lynn LaFrisco and, of course, the very popular down on the uh, midtown, uh, the, the bottom part of our uh, island, uh, Steve Bender. <laughs> hmm. Ah, I'm thirsty today for some reason. I think it's because I did I eat I ate some bacon. I think that's what did it. Anyway, how y'all doing? Good, 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 really good. Yeah. Um, uh, Shecky and I are living with bad news. Uh oh. Yeah. One of his favorite series and one of my favorite series got canceled over at CBS. And, and also two of yours, actually, Shaggy. I never watched the United States of Al. Yeah, but I said to you yesterday, that's just, you know, they do their research and it is what it is. Yeah, and I guess, you know, again, it goes back to my feeling about old people is that it was a show about old people is what it basically right. was. Right, 25 is not going to watch it. Exactly. You know, so, I mean, it, it, it's a, it's it's terrible. And there was a place for that show. And it probably was Netflix. But, you know. It, Our 25-year-old kids love the uh, the Grace and Frankie show. 25-year-old kids like Grace and Frankie? How do yeah, you they know? love it. Are you, are you saying that as a 50-year-old? How old are you now, Mike? I'm 46. You're 46. You're saying that as a 46-year-old that all the kids like Grace and Frankie are just... I don't open. know about all the kids. Our kids, our 25-year-old kids do, and their friends, they have watching parties for it and everything. They love that show. Now, how many here watch Grace and Frankie? I watch, and I'm about four, four or five seasons behind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me too. I watched one episode and I'm four or five seasons well, behind. I, I 
liked it, but then I just got distracted like squirrel, you know, and I just never went back. But my sister was talking about it a week or so ago, and I was going to start watching it again. Yeah. Watch- yeah, 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 yeah. You watched like three episodes and couldn't take it. it, it yeah, I, I just, you know, it didn't, didn't appeal to me on no. any level. No, me neither. Uh, and uh, I just, I think it, what? I really do. What would you say? I think it's a woman's show. It's not, you know, it's a chick yeah, but, show. Yeah, but obviously if it were a woman's show, you'd be watching it, right? Well, I, like I said, I had a distraction, but I keep seeing it and thinking I want to start watching it again. What, what was the distraction? Probably some other show. Oh, uh, I see. Okay, fine. <laughs> well, I was. We were watching a show. It, we watched like the, and like all the deck, you know, like the beautiful beach house they live in and all that. We um, uh, watched this uh, thing, uh, which was a movie called. Uh, uh, what was it? Uh, Lincoln, the Lincoln lawyer. Was that right? good? It sucks. Oh, good. Oh, <laughs> I'll tell yeah, you. But you're wrong. still watching it. No, but I watched. We watched all of it because you invest yourself in. But if that fifth episode, you go, this is really not going anywhere. But oh, now we're oh. halfway through. We're invested. Therefore, we have to finish watching it. Okay. Yeah. That's what Netflix says to you. Nobody else does binge watching anymore. None of those other outfits. So uh, we we got to the end of it and I looked at her and I said, if this were on CBS, we wouldn't watch it. You know, and this show was done by David Kelly, who's done nothing but broadcast television all his life and doesn't know how to do anything else. And it, it's just another, it's, it's, it's an episodic TV show, just like it would be uh, on, on regular network. And yet here comes uh, Netflix. We'll buy it. It's David E. Kelly. No, you shouldn't buy it specifically because it's David E. Kelly, because he knows how to do broadcast television, but he has no idea how to do this kind of stuff. You know, I just hope they come along and get Steve Bochco to do cop rock again. <laughs> <laughs> You know, that may be a, 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 a reference that only a couple of us got. Anybody else get that one? <laughs> oh, so you were there for Cop Rock, too, as well, right? How many episodes did it last? Three. Something like That's that. about 20 minutes in my house. When it, I was was a, it was a cop show with singing and dancing. Oh. I guess I guess the concept, you know, if you're sitting around your apartment high, sounds like a good idea. <laughs> yeah. You know, I thought it's an exceptionally good idea, but the next day you come down off your high and you go, "Did I really think that was a good idea?" You know. But when are they going to bring back uh, Battle of the Network Stars? <laughs> 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 they probably have it. We just didn't notice it. <laughs> probably right. <laughs> well, Julia's coming back any day. Julia? No, the old one, the original. <laughs> the one with what? Diane Carroll. Diane Carroll. Carroll. She's yeah. dead. Yeah, she, yeah. Dead. and it was. Uh, it was the. Uh, it lasted one episode. Did it? Oh, it was like three years. No, it lasted several years. Did it last? Yeah. No, there was, but wasn't there another one with a black woman earlier than that that only lasted like one episode? And then they decided Negroes don't work. You know? <laughs> I mean, they they, uh, they just did nothing with that. You know, they they had they did not commit to it. But anyway. So, yeah, but did you see David Tennant coming back to Doctor Who for at least one episode? Yeah, yeah. Well, talking there, about coming back, I haven't I haven't watched much yet, but I'm very excited about the kids in the hall coming back. Yeah, you mean the you mean you mean the kids in the hall with walkers? I know. <laughs> <laughs> you know they're talented guys. I'm I'm willing to. I want to see what they do. They're funny. Uh, you know, I never liked that show. Really? I never got into it. You know. Uh, oh, I, mean, I just the best catch comedy. Yeah. Really, I never, I never really liked it that much. I don't know why. I just never could get into it. I kept trying, and I went, eh, I can't. You know. I always love when organically the kids in the hall comes up in conversation with Americans, and I always ask this question: Did it seem very Canadian to you? Because up here in high school, like that was more popular than Saturday Night Live up here growing up. 
Well, because it was a Canadian product, right. wasn't it? Yeah. It, it didn't yeah. really. I mean, SCTV also had obviously the Canadian thing, yeah. but they didn't fit, and that even seemed a little more Canadian because of Bob and Doug McKenzie and stuff like that. <laughs> For right? sure. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, uh, isn't Lauren Michaels Canadian? He sure yeah. is. Yeah. Yeah. So, who was it said to me? Oh, yeah. It was uh, Harry Shearer who said to me off the air, not on the air. Uh, I learned one thing by working at SNL. Never work for a Canadian Jew. <laughs> That's specific. Yeah. Oh, good line. <laughs> you know, but I mean, it, it was it was pretty, pretty bad, you know. So anyway. So uh, anyway, Marjorie is out at the dentist who wants her in the chair for two hours. You know, that's why I never go back to the, go to that dentist very often. It's because when they do start working on me, they're very slow. You know, mm -hmm. and I want a faster dentist. I used to have a really fast dentist. He put me out on gas and do a, do a whole complete root canal in one session. Boom, boom, yeah. we're out of here. <laughs> you know, and now it's like, it's like, you got to come. But this will take at least three visits. Oh, no. What, you have to get to China? <laughs> yeah. Drilling for oil. <laughs> yeah, drilling for oil. Well, the rain has started. Oh, and we already had it here. Oh, well, I just got it seconds you, ago. You know what happens? They're working on this building uh, that I'm in, this old, old building, which really they don't take very good care of. But they've got to take care of certain things. Otherwise, they could get sued. And one of the things is, I guess, every hundred years, you have to point the building, which means you go and there, you know, there's like this is you great. pull out the grout and you regrout it or whatever you, call you it. or you pull out the bad grout. If you see it's good grout, you leave it there, right? And they meow and all around the building, right? Uh, and they've been doing the they haven't been really doing the courtyard as much as they should. So today they've been putting up more of these sheds that protect people underneath. So if any bricks or anything should fall, you don't get hit by it. Mm. And they've been putting it up all day. That's the courtyard, which Shecky knows is a beautiful, wonderful courtyard. Um, it's just, it's a mess. It's just an absolute mess. Mm. And it'll be there for five years. Well, yeah, they've been doing that all year. Well, they say that I talked to the super and he said they tell him that they'll be through with the outside of the building within two months, which would be nice because I'd like to get that shelter off because they, they, they put up the, I don't know if they do this in other cities, folks, but hear that they have a shelter. They have a shelter that goes around the building. Scaffolding, so, right? Like scaffolding, scaffold. yeah. But it's kind of a shelter, too, because what it becomes is um, uh, it, all the homeless seem to love to hang out there. Sure. You well, know, because it really, dry. yeah, yeah, it's dry and it's not wet. And it's, it, I don't know, I guess you, I guess you get high better under there. I don't know. <laughs> I don't like uh, and so I, I refer to it now. As a homeless shelter. <laughs> you hear that? Wow. Yeah. That's been going on all day. Yeah. Yeah. So don't worry about it. Just live with it. You know. Isn't that building 100 years old, huh? That's crazy. Try 120. 122. 122 years old. Jeez. Yeah. Are there old pictures around of it? Oh, yeah. Oh, That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, I mean, I have pictures I've shown Shecky from the courtyard that we that are online, actually, from 2011, something like that. 1911. 1911. And they have done nothing to fix it up. <laughs> you know, <laughs> since then. That's the that's the point, you know. And then the first movie palace is across the street from your apartment, as you know. Yeah, Caddy uh, Corner from us is the is what was the first. It was a Roxy. It was Roxy's first theater. Yeah, wow. yeah, and now and it's of course a, it's a church now. It's a church now. Shecky uh, keeps saying he's going to come down, and we should on a weekend or something go over there. Maybe go pay to see them do their little show, show or whatever. <laughs> if he wants to see what it looks like too on the inside, and supposedly a lot of it is still there. They kept a lot of the uh, movie palace accoutrement, of course. Well, in Queens, we got lucky. Lowe's Valencia on Jamaica Avenue. 
was taken over by a church in the 1980s, I think. Yeah. But it still looks the same as it did when it was a movie palace. Well, that's nice. We don't know what happened, though. See, something like around, I don't know, in the 1950s, Roxy got rid of it or something. Or whoever was you. No, he was out of it by then because he had the Roxy down on 50th yeah. Street. Yeah, but whenever, a lot of different people took it over. And I think as they took it over, they didn't maintain the stuff that was old movie palacey, if that's yeah. a term. Yeah. Like, Apparently, the Lowe's 175th Street still looks like it did back in the day. Oh, really? That's, that's where Reverend Ike used to have his cathedral. These all got taken over as churches, didn't they? It's interesting. Yeah. But it would, it would, yeah. Make, it would make it perfect, you know. I can't tell you how grateful I am that I'm a part of this group uh, for the for for that kind of the history lessons that I get from this place. Um, I love that. Uh, I, when I saw Letterman last week, it was in the Fonda Theater. And that place has a huge, huge history attached to it as well. And then also, I got to shout out to che Checky. I wanted to take my wife to a really nice restaurant for her birthday. And he suggested Musso and Frank's down on Hollywood Boulevard. He loves there. Musso and Frank's. Yeah. Oh, my God. What an experience that was. And they talk about the history that's been in those walls and all the back rooms and stuff. I just well, love that you guys Charlie have this knowledge. Well, you table right by the window where he and Doug Fairbanks would go for lunch every day. Do they let anybody sit there anymore? Oh, I've eaten. I've eaten at that table. Oh, okay. All right. It's not the same table, is it? No, but it's just. <laughs> uh, it's, it's, if you know, it's the quote Charlie Chaplin table. I, you know, it'd be terrible to have the original Charlie Chaplin, Doug Fairbanks table there. And as you're sitting there, you say to the waitress, can you do something to keep the table from wobbling? <laughs> <laughs> And they make the best martinis in the country. Yeah, my wife had one. It was an exp it was an experience just having the martini. Yeah, yeah. Was it expensive? The whole place? You know what? No, I I was ready crazy. to pay. Yeah, I was ready to pay big money. I paid I think two hundred for the whole meal with the tip. That's pretty good. Yeah, and I tip well. I, I, yeah. I imagine I'm saying that sounds good, but man, years ago I wouldn't have said that sounds good. No. You know going to say you know what do they do blow you after it you know <laughs> we were in a back room but they didn't offer that service um yeah. and i didn't have cocktails my wife had martinis i had shirley temples because i was driving that night mm -hmm. and even the shirley temples were incredible <laughs> wow 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 oh, and man. the martinis are in silver shakers yep nothing better than a good um um uh, shirley temple it's true. Yeah. My it's father, true. and there's my, an art to making it. I'm not making that up. I, you may be jesting. I'm not. I there, there is an art to a good Shirley Temple. Well, my father. Yeah, well, there's a company so, called Saranac in upstate New York that sells them, and they're very good. What the Shirley Temples? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's like grenadine or something, isn't it? What is it? It's yeah. It's like a cherryish soda, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes well, my they make father, it with ginger ale, sometimes seven up, sometimes my, but, my yeah. father invented a drink for me, which was called a Percy Collins. <laughs> that was the Tom Collins without gin, which is Collins mix. <laughs> basically lemonade. Yeah. 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 Well, it's like a Virgin Mary. Yeah, it's you like know, a Virgin it's a Mary. Mary minus the vodka. And he called it a Percy Collins, I guess, because it was a gay reference, you know. <laughs> Which we can't do anymore. We're not allowed to do that sort of thing any longer. You can cut this out in post production. I'll cut it. Yeah, let's cut it in post. Yeah, but uh, no, it was it was a it was a um, um, uh, you know I mean I I I used my father used to like to try it like like to have me sit at a bar with him even when I was a little kid. You know, they, when you're a little kid, they'll let you sit at a bar because they figure, well, you know, nobody's going to try and sneak a drink for that for that kid. You know, they don't, they don't allow that anymore. They don't allow it anymore. My father, we used to my father used to belong to the Musicians Union and they used to have in their union building on the in the basement a bar. Mm. And we used to go down there all the time and I have beef jerky and a Percy Collins. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but that was that was long ago and far away. Yeah. Uh, or Virgin Collins, let's call it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I'm trying to think what's been happening that um, uh, uh, here's the big story to me of the week. OK, it's the best story of the week. 
There's a thing every year, and I don't know if you're aware of it, called the Eurovision contest in Europe. Are you, are you familiar with what I'm talking about? If no. you aren't, you must somehow lay your hands on the Eurovision contest. Um, this year they had a song. Uh, John Oliver played this one guy singing a song that was, I don't like meat. I only eat vegetables and pussy. That was that was <laughs> it song. That was the song. That was the song. And uh, but what happened was they all had this Eurovision contest, and then everybody, the voting people for it are are ju some judges, but basically the public votes. And in huge numbers, I mean, in the millions of votes. And uh, at the end, the winner is proclaimed the person who gets the most votes. And guess who won this year? Ukraine won. This Ukraine year. won this year. Nice. Now, guess what the rules are of the Eurovision contest? That next year, the Eurovision contest has to be held in the country that won right. the previous year. Oh, wow. So, uh, <laughs> uh, what's his name? Walensky um, came out, I think it was yesterday, and stated that uh, next year, if they're going to do the, you know, they're going to do it in his country, they're going to try and do it in Mariupol. <laughs> uh, That's great. I don't know where you would do it in Mariupol, but there they would do it in Mariupol. Lots of open space. Yeah. I was just going to say they clear. I'm thinking they cleared up some space here recently. Yeah, just back hey. from an exhausting time at the dentist. <laughs> if now here from an from an exhausting time at the dentist is Marjorie Miller. I've been there since one. Wow. Yeah. Well, you know, when you said to me she was going to take two hours with you, everybody here went, "What kind of dentist spends two hours with you?" Well, one hour was getting it clean. It actually took 50 minutes, not an hour. And then the next was with her. She had to do a lot of stuff. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So how do you feel? Okay. Not really. I've been hurting. Well, you know, I don't want to go. Through there are it. other parts of her that hurt. <laughs> That's just because I'm such a good lover. <laughs> <laughs> no comment from this end. No comment. <laughs> Was it a Steve Martin Little Shop of Horrors type experience there, Marjorie? Well, it's actually like a four-part thing. I mean, one involved um, getting a new crown. And while she was in there, she saw the tooth next to it was really deep. And um, <laughs> so she had to put the temporary back in, go in and clean it out, only to discuss that it was so bad that we're going to take the tooth out it's a back tooth, so she put the temporary back on and I have to see her in two weeks. Wow. Steve Bender had to leave us. He left a note. Uh, what do he say here? Uh, he's got to go. He's got, he's got a tutor. He's, he's got a tutor. He, <laughs> in the old days, that meant you had to do some blow, but, you know. <laughs> God. Oh, man. Nothing like when a doctor or a dentist says, while I'm in here, <laughs> dot, dot, dot. Uh, yeah. You know that boat payment's coming up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I just figured pull. Them. You know, if I had my way when I was younger, I just had all my teeth pulled and have an implant put it on both parts, and then I don't have to ever worry about my dental work again. You know, mm. just send it out. <laughs> Letter Letterman pretty much did that. Did he really? Oh wow! Wow. Well, yeah, he used to talk a lot about going to the dentist, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so when he got the gap fixed, he got everything wholesale changed, the whole mouth? Pretty much. I mean, I couldn't tell you exactly what he did. Well, he left the gap, didn't he? A little bit of the gap. Oh, no, the gap was gone. Oh, the, well, was the gap was gone. Hmm. That was kind of part of his personality whenever yeah. there were oh, caricatures of him. Yeah. There was a gap there. Yeah. Now, now it's a beard. Now it's a beard. <laughs> it's a beard yeah. An ugly beard. Oh boy. Oh boy. But anyway, um, so we have the Eurovision contest, and that, that uh, 
uh, who when they let the public vote, don't you think Ukraine Ukraine had a really good advantage? I mean, they could have been terrible, and they still would have had an advantage. Yeah, but Afghanistan never won. <laughs> <laughs> You're right, <laughs> but it, it, that, that would be a strange one, though. See, it doesn't have the same impact that this thing does. It's like in, in, in Afghanistan, it wasn't like it wasn't wholesale murder going on there. You know? Yeah, they well, were never betrayed again, as the I don't victims know, of the bully. But I'll bet you it was. But I don't I couldn't tell you. Well, that yeah. I but I mean, you hear such terrible things about what's going on in Ukraine. That it's, but now it looks like the Russians are getting out of there. Looks like they don't want to be there. Do you know they've lost one third of their troops? Well, they're getting their asses handed to them. <laughs> I mean, that's a you know, in in Vietnam, we can't even say we lost one third of our troops. You know, uh, so I mean, it it, 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 it 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 a horrible, horrible thing. I just hope it's over with soon because I feel real sorry. You know what I don't understand this week is the Russians are attacking Odessa. But they annexed it like 12 years ago. So why are you attacking your own? Yeah. Well, it's it, it, it's a way of them claiming victory. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The only thing I felt sorry when I heard Odessa was being shelled, all I could think of is I hope they don't hit the steps. You know. Yeah. The Odessa or the, steps. Or the statue of Lenin outside of McDonald's, right <laughs> past the steps. <laughs> really? Oh, yeah. I've got a picture of it. Of Stalin? No, Lenin. Lenin. Oh, okay, well, I had a statue of Lenin on top of on my the building, top of your old building on uh, on Houston Street. The building I was in, when I first went down there to look at it, they said, we have an apartment there. Go look. It's a bar apartment, a little in, a couple of doors in from the uh, from the corner. And if you look up on the, uh, on the roof, there's a statue of Lenin. I have a picture of it. So I was thinking, who would put a statue of John Lennon on top of the roof? <laughs> you were going to say that. So I get down there and I look up, and it's Nikolai Lennon. And I'm going, wow, I want to be in this building. And then the name of the building, the name of the building was the Red Square. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Yeah. And wow. uh, it was kind of like an art piece of sorts that some guy, you know, they they put up a normal apartment building but the main floor was very artsy craftsy you you remember Jackie, you were there yeah and you go up to the roof there was lennon they took lennon down finally uh, and why i mean it's such a to begin with it was a great thing for me to say to people uh if you're coming down to see me just look for the building with lennon on the on the roof and they go john i go no nikolai you know I have a picture of it. Oh, you have a picture of it? Yeah, I'm only in 2006. I don't know where they got it. I figured it was part of the uh, 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 Soviet Union going out of business sale, you know, <laughs> because this this looked like the real deal. This didn't look like some prop that somebody made up for a movie or anything like that. This was an iron cast giant. It was probably a sculptor that did it. No, I don't think so. That looked too much like something you would find in the Soviet Union. You know, it's interesting watching things go from being historical and famous to infamous. Like, um, my wife won't let me put this up in the studio for the HeCast that we do, but I've got a picture of Bruce Jenner. It's like a picture about this big, Bruce Jenner. I think he's holding the pole vault that's in black and white, and it's autographed. Like, it's a really, really cool picture. Well, what's wrong like, with that? she's like don't you dare put that up it'll cause a firestorm right now with people <laughs> who are you know on both sides but something a very famous image has now become infamous and statues like that are happening uh, it's happening with statues all over the place why would you put well, what's wrong with a picture of bruce jenner with a pole vault it's not like he didn't pole vault exactly exactly didn't, that's you know that's, you're gonna deny you know, it, what was he? he was a decathlon winner yeah yeah are you going to deny him that no matter what what politics he has or what, you know, sex he has at the current moment or what persuasion? It's in the name of not offending people is the argument. Ah, fuck it. 
Well, that's where <laughs> I offend them. Not like everybody to. should be offended. You know what? What happens if I say something wrong here? I'm going to lose my job. You know. Put a link. I put a link to the statue of Lenin in the chat. Oh, okay. <laughs> all right. It's there. So, um, uh, so you see it there, right? Yeah. I wasn't I wasn't lying about it, right? No, it's very prominent. Yeah, but it's not there anymore. They took it down. That's too bad. And I thought that was terrible. It was great. And didn't the clock have the numbers going in the different direction? It, 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 no. what, it what the hell? <laughs> it was cute. You see the clock? Yeah, they're completely out of order. What the hell is yeah, that? Right. <laughs> How could I not want to live in a building like that? Right. You know, and it was actually, it was a pretty good apartment. It served me well, you know, it was about the size of this room, but you know, Holy smoke. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, let's see here. I'd say it was about the size of what our dining room and our living room combined Marjorie. What was the apartment on, on 14th street and on the, uh, Excuse me, on Houston Street. Or it was two rooms. Yeah, it was two rooms. Well, you know, fairly decent living room. Yeah. yeah, because the kitchen was part of the living room, as I remember. Right. Yeah, with, with yeah. a little breakfast bar yeah. there, you know, so on. Yeah, it was, it was, a, it was, it was not, a, it was not an expensive apartment. I think we, I was paying at the end, I was paying something like 2000 a month, something like that. 2700 Was I really that much? Yeah. You remember, okay. Little things you don't forget. You want to know what else I don't forget? I know that uh -oh. I didn't pick you up from the <laughs> <laughs> I didn't pick you up from the it? hospital. Call back. <laughs> was it Mount Sinai? I forget. Yes, yeah, Mount Sinai. Okay. They have a plaque there. This is the place that Alex <laughs> didn't pick up Marjorie. <laughs> This is the one that I'll never forget to my dark day. Well, but you see, I mean, and Mandy, please chime in if you wish to chime in here. But women Just always say, have. Us women stay okay. together. Okay. I'll just chime in for old Marjorie. Thank yeah, you. But... <laughs> there we uh, go. No, but uh, it, m most guys know what, we're, what I'm talking about when I talk about a spank bank. Um, <laughs> this is their version of a spank bank. Only if. It's things they can remember to hold against their mate for life. I have a few things that I hold. So they they can keep bringing life. up and bringing up and bringing up. And guys, just let go of them, don't we? Hey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> funny. I mean, guys, can have, guys and guys can have, you know, a disagreement. And an hour later, you're drinking a beer together. I think great. Boy, but Mandy, who is a saint, as we all know, uh, uh, when you were married, you never brought up those things, did you, your husband, when you got into an argument? Of course, uh, did. this like not to get into my my therapy sessions, but this is really <laughs> it was because we didn't fight, we didn't, we just didn't communicate. So there was a the, like I said, not to get into my therapy, but yeah, no, we didn't argue, we didn't. Oh, well, that's where we made our mistake, Marjorie. We communicate. Yes, exactly. We argue. You should communicate. <laughs> we, do. we argue. Well, that is a big. I need to find me somebody I can fight with. That is a major gripe, though, that women do have in a relationship. Oh, he we he doesn't communicate. You know. Yeah. I communicate a lot. Well, I mean, I tell her every, <laughs> I tell her every ache and pain that I have. I think that. <laughs> A form of communication. That doesn't count. Slash hypochondria. <laughs> Major <laughs> hypochondria. Yeah. But uh, she'll never know. She'll never forget that. She'll, I won't. Uh, I won't. I won't. <laughs> Here I am with major spine surgery. I'm in a wheelchair. Oh, geez. Here we go. Unless somebody <laughs> picks you up. <laughs> Wait, we get love the it. issues out. We'll think of you as Amber Heard for the moment here. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm on Marjorie's side here. Hey, thank yeah. you. Thank you should you. go. Go crap in his bed. By the way, I went. Over, I, <laughs> I went over to um, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, YouTube, and um, I went down to their news section, and every news item was live. Amber Heard, live. Yeah. Amber Heard, live. Amber Heard. The OJ trial. 
you know something? She like should be, trial. She should be charged after this, not only for her lawyer's fees and for all but that, her bad acting. But, no, but for all the <laughs> tissues, the Kleenexes she's been using during this. The they have a box now. of them for her there. She's a terrible actress. <laughs> Yeah, but he was a terrible yeah. he was a terrible husband. So you know, which which trumps what? You know. But I mean, uh, she just she, you begin to look at it and you go, she's an actress, isn't she? Yes, and a bad one. Yeah. The thing I, the thing that I don't understand, and I was I've never been in a, that kind of situation before, so I know that there are definitely women that are abused, and there's men that are abused, which this is brought to light. But it's like, it seems to me like he would have shown her these behaviors before she married him. Mm. I mean, she didn't have a problem getting married to him. Yeah. So I well, never she was trying like hell to get married to uh, Elon Musk prior to him. Her. No, yeah. prior to him, prior to Depp. She was yeah. going with Amber Her uh, with, with Elon Musk. Elon Musk. Elon Musk anybody it. else talking about Johnny Depp being abusive, like any of his prior girlfriends or wives or whatever. So it just seems very suspect. I mean, obviously he has issues, but. But today she was showing all the furniture he broke. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm going, yeah, he broke furniture, but he didn't break you. He threw things at him. Yeah. Yeah. He he showed a cut. He had, you know, I mean, it's, it's what he's trying to do with this trial is to kind of make himself look better. Yeah. In the eyes of the public. He's trying to salvage his career or his yeah, definitely. Yeah. The best way for him to salvage his career would be to start acting. <laughs> <laughs> Come on now. Everybody might be really surprised if he acted. Well, well, you like you like Johnny Depp? I, I think he I, made that were very good. I like Johnny Depp. I always I have. like Johnny Depp. Yeah. I, I mean, for what he does, I think he's decent. I'm not a huge like I was never a huge Pirates of the Caribbean fan. But like I just remember Edward Scissorhands. I mean, that had to have been yeah. just that role right there, you know. I, I never miss a Bobby Slayton movie. <laughs> was he in that? Yeah, some yeah, he was in that. Was he really? Yeah. yeah he he was he uh, um who was it? Uh somebody was doing a sketch and he was one of the people doing the sketch with oh, uh, I'm trying to remember who the which which character it was that was on TV doing a sketch. But anyway, uh, uh, I always whenever somebody ever asked me if you could be any other animal, what animal would you be? My response was always Johnny Depp. I love that guy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. this trial has shown like just even more quirkiness about him, like. Just well, both of them. Perky fella. Both of them. What is it? What, wait, wait a minute. What, did, what does it say to America that this has become the go to destination for news? You know, I mean, come on, there's a little it, thing that happened in Buffalo this weekend. We're not, we're not running that on every channel today. We're running <laughs> Amber Heard going, woo, 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 woo. you know. As we can't face it. She right. did the she did this, I have a tear in my eye, but I don't want it to come out thing. <laughs> yeah. And I went, oh my God. You know. Well, did you see who's gonna be on the Sports Illustrated swimsuit cover this year? Oh <laughs> Kim Kardashian. Oh. Ah. Oh. With her butter. I hope her butter. not. I hope not from the back. Oh. No idea. I haven't seen the picture. So disappointing. They're going to have to have two magazines if they do it from the back. <laughs> <laughs> a Did nice that... gatefold cover where it folds yeah. out. Yeah. And it's it's on one, one, one cheek on the other. It's gotten it's bigger, really too. As she's gotten thing. older, it's gotten bigger. Yeah. Her butt. Oh, uh, can I just ask you this, Charlie? And, and please don't take this wrong. You know exactly what I'm going to ask yeah, there, no. because you're our go-to guy for for black societal <laughs> placement. Uh, why is it that black guys love women with big butts? Am I right? Is it a, is it a thing? You're right that, that a lot of us do, but uh, I, to tell you why, I don't know. Yeah, but you, but you don't, right? You're not. No, no, I, I like nice felt. 
but like, yeah well then you, you you probably have to turn your blackness in at the door yeah you know because it's it's uh that's uh, i've always known even black guys i knew they could well, you look at the thing on that and i'm looking yeah. at this thing and i'm going what you know I guess you must like CinemaScope or something. Yeah. <laughs> something you can really bury your face in, I guess. I don't know. I, I guess. <laughs> well, you, you know something, and I worry. I worry about this. Okay, this is this is something I've told Marjorie this before. I see a lot of big, fat, black women in this neighborhood, and I worry about them because that's not healthy. No matter what you I, call it, it's not healthy. And I think that, you know, if we want to do a solid for the black community, we would actually try and do something to change the eating habits or the dietary requirements of, of black people. Well, Michelle Obama tried to do that with her vegetable yeah. garden. With her vegetable garden, yeah. It's everybody in this country, though. I mean, everybody's seems larger than they use. Well, as you get older, you get a little girth on you, but you know, you have to work at keeping it off because that can kill you. I mean, I look at these women and I go, you know, I I, I feel I don't want her to be this way. I want her to lose something so that she can live longer. You, you know. know. What? But uh, like, uh, uh, well then you got that somebody like Lizzo who is promoting the fact that she yeah. That that's that's a healthy look for her and a healthy feeling. She feels good. So, how, how do you? I'm sure the black little girls are looking at that, and going, "Well, there's a role model for me." So, is that and one day? Be? And one day, what will happen? Lizzo will have a massive cornier, cornier, cornier corniary, cornier, whatever, you know, heart attack, heart attack, there you go. and and everybody's going to suddenly go. I wonder how that happened. Yeah, yeah. You know how that happened. There's such a fine line between promoting you know saying hey let's all be large and just saying hey i'm large and i'm please accept me and not put me down I, I, I understand there's something to be said for her learning to live with it okay mm -hmm. and not be shamed by it right i understand that but that's not what we're talking about here we're talking about health mm -hmm. and we're talking well, about what about all the women who for whatever reason have breast enlargement and get right. shot up with crap and you know I think there's less of that going on now than there used to be. Yeah, I, and I have a friend that had to have him removed. She got very sick from the yeah. they leave. Yeah, because the silicon or whatever. Yeah, I've, I've, I've whatever heard a lot of that. Yeah. Well, yeah. well, what happens is that was the earlier stuff, okay, where they put silicone in there. What yeah. happened is in later years, they now fill them with saline so that if mm -hmm. it does burst, it's, it's well, basically it's saline. So it'll just go into your system and then dissipate. Right. Yeah. You'll pee a lot. Uh, but uh, uh, prior to that, it was dangerous. But the thing is that I, I just think that women are not getting them as much any longer because they realize that, hey, it didn't make them that more popular. You know, no, it's yeah. whatever you get in life. Fine. I did, I did go out with a man that told me he liked them. And this was like a date. And I was like. <laughs> okay. to somebody that doesn't have them does he bring a chisel with him when he does have sex you know come on i uh, i had a girlfriend who had both of them enlarged but for the but not the reason you would expect she got breast cancer and so she had nothing about the face what you know something that's the that's the way you talk about all the women i went out with you know <laughs> it didn't, it didn't change what anything did about her day? face what'd she say she, say, say I, it again. I, I said that she had both breasts done and Marjorie yeah. said, but she didn't do anything about her face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a little catty. Well, she didn't have cancer of the face. <laughs> yeah. And I won't say who it was, but she has done this program before, but she had two of them and I never found that. And she, she, the doctor said, how big do you want them? She says, well, you know, go, go large, you know, why not? Because you're taking it out, off, you know, go large. So they, they put in these massive things. Oh, and I, no. you know, I, I never mean, thought. I would be, what were they before? Do that again. You know, whatever. Yeah, they exactly. Exactly. Um, you know, it was kind of like, you know, in the old days, um, in movies, people got had hair pieces, but you didn't know it. 
And the reason was like, for instance, with uh, Humphrey Bogart, he wore it as a widow's peak. Yeah. So who would wear a widow's peak if they're, if they're going bald and they want to make sure everybody thinks they have hair, but it gave him enough hair there that people thought he had hair. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and the thing is that when you then put on a beetle wig or something like that, you know, everybody <laughs> knows you're faking it, you know, and it's embarrassing. Yeah. So when you get your breasts done, if you want to get them a little bit enlarged, just go a little bit larger. You know, if you're going to do that, you know. Well, I actually had another one of my really good friends. She had them and it it leaked with saline, but it started getting weird looking and weird. So she had them redone. And I thought the same thing. Oh, she's just going to get them the same. She's like, I think I'm going to get them a little bigger. And I said, oh, God, try to talk her out of it. And yeah. they're not bad, but she's so petite. But I have to say, sometimes I am a little envious because just with the bathing suit perspective yeah like, but you know something mandy anyone that's thin and small does not have big breasts i know right. it's i know right. she it doesn't it looks doesn't kind of, exist yeah but who's thin and tall doesn't have big breasts small small in, in structure like she's oh very- i did i disagree with you i've no i've gone out with women who are quite well endowed and are like five foot one yeah well you don't know well <laughs> dolly parton god love her she just looks strange to me well, she like, she just, she's, she's never had any work done. <laughs> what are you kidding? She has. She oh, wait. oh, okay. All right. How does, she, how does she manage that without tipping she over? Is what I want. No, small waist. Brian, what is that? Your best Rip Sheckman impression, or what? <laughs> <laughs> I, felt, I felt like you know, Marjorie. Hi, Brian. How are you? <laughs> I feel like do a bed routine. See how that feels. Yeah, but you're you're uh, you're uh, sideways. Sideways. You're there sideways. you go. There, there, you go. Go. there uh, you go. Oh, I was getting my neck was killing me. <laughs> where where are you at home? Uh, no Lodi. Lodi. Every Monday you're in Lodi now. Yeah, I just had a meeting, so I just checked into my room. So I'll be here until tomorrow. Leave tomorrow. Well, you live where? Same as a Almaty Valley, so it's about uh, an hour and forty-five minutes away. Oh, okay. I leave like Monday morning. I come up here and work, and then I'll stay here overnight, then work in the morning, and then go. Yeah, that was by my house. house. Every every now and then, I would do like a a show that we did the next morning from some hotel, like down in the East South Bay, and they would get me a room, and I would stay there. But it always made me feel weird staying in a room in an area that I already live in. Yeah. You know. So I I always found that weird. So what what hotel is it? Is I'm sure I'm sure it's not uh, like a days in or something. <laughs> Beautiful Hampton. Huh? Hampton. Hilton Hampton Inn. Hilton Hampton. Okay. Is, is that a nice uh, hotel? I haven't been there. Most No. No. It's standard. <laughs> standard. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um I, a couple, a couple of times they put me up when I was in the South Bay in in uh, the presidential suite, <laughs> which and I said, "What president has stayed here?" And they said, "None." And I said, "Then why is it the presidential suite?" Just and in case. That just in case the president decides to come to visit, we have right. those for him. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and stay but, at the Howard Johnson's. <laughs> yeah. But uh, let's see. We Amber, we got a lot of lot of uh, mileage out of Amber Heard today, yeah, didn't yeah. we? <laughs> so did Johnny Depp. <laughs> <laughs> Does he get to go back on the stand now and refute all the all the busted furniture? I mean, I would think that if 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 he busted furniture but didn't bust her, then what does it yeah. matter? You know, it's just furniture. That's verbal verbal abuse. Verbal yeah. abuse. Okay. And I'm sure she was incapable of verbal abuse. I'm sure it's both ways. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, you know, that was that was a lovely marriage, wasn't it? You know, <laughs> How long were they married actually? Well, why didn't Johnny Depp see here's what gets me about guys? I mean, guys are so pliable. But what, what, did you sure. see any warning signs that this was her nature? 
I can I can talk about this a little bit because of the men's mental wellness podcast uh, that that we host here. A lot of the time, guys silo up, and we live these quiet lives of desperation. We don't say anything to anybody until it gets so bad that we have to, and we just take it on the chin and take it on the chin and take it on the chin, and that's actually really really common. But didn't I mean she had her bad bad reputation, didn't she? I mean a lousy reputation as a girlfriend. So yes. there's pride there too, right? Like, okay, I'm going to prove them wrong. And then you didn't prove them wrong. And you have a hard time coming back out and saying, oh yeah, y'all were right. But here you are a multimillionaire actor. Okay. You have a lot to protect. And all of a sudden you decide to marry this maniac. Yeah. who was a known maniac. He's not ugly either. You know, no, she's not ugly. I, he, he's oh, not, he's oh. not ugly. No. Oh, that- no. And get any girl, you know, so yeah, 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 that too. I mean, if I were him, I mean, if I were you know an actor and I had a lot of money and you know I wasn't married, I wouldn't marry the first woman that comes along like that. Yes, That's a very logical, well thought out uh thought that you just proclaimed out there, but logic goes out the window when it comes yeah. to this stuff. What you're saying right. when it comes to sex, because that's got to be what it's all about. Your yep. dick leads. The, the, the choices made with your dick. Uh, not your our, our, men's choices are made sometimes, yeah. many times with their penis. That's why I'm glad to be 82 and to have <laughs> had all those prostate operations so that really I'm, I'm immune. So you can think clearly. Is that what you're saying? I'm immune. <laughs> Wrong head making the decisions. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm just completely immune to it. But there was a time, I guess, where I wasn't immune. Shecky. Did I make some bad choices? You've known me a long time. Lots. <laughs> <laughs> really? Hey, look, you came out of it. Wait, 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 wait a minute. What bad choices did I make? I, <laughs> don't I say Marjorie. Don't say Marjorie. No, I'm thinking of, of and I have to like her, your previous wife. I, Susan? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, Susan was terrific. Of the one before that. But she had problems. The one before that uh, was Ronnie. And how about the one before that? I can't remember her name. (laughs) If anybody wants to hear a sum up of all of these women and more, life in the passing lane with uh, Alex. Highly, highly recommend it, by the way. It's like 40-something episodes on Apple. Go get it. It's awesome. Chapter one. Right. I can't remember in that. Did I, I was almost going to do an episode on my all the lovers that I had and who was the best and who was the worst. Well, you chronicled you along the way the pretty well, thing. but uh, the one that you referred to as girlfriend, I think you gave, gave the most airtime to. Uh, no, that's Marjorie. <laughs> no, no, no. It, it was before Marjorie. Marjorie's girlfriend. Marjorie, a lot of airtime. Another, another girlfriend? No, let's see. There was, uh, there was girlfriend. That's Marjorie. And then I had another one that I referred to as Fish Princess. Is that I don't the remember one that one. Because she had a she and her husband ran a fishing business out of Fisherman's Wharf. And she knew everything about fish. So I used to call her Fish Princess. Yeah, they wasn't Xanthi print uh, pr- um what was her nickname? Well, Xanthi, I guess, was the nickname. No, I didn't I didn't I didn't keep, really give her a nickname. Uh, you know. I, occasionally there was something I'd come up with, but I didn't do that much. But Marjorie is always girlfriend. Yeah. Um, I meant more in the uh, in the in that show. You didn't want to you didn't want to give up this gal's name, so you you just referred to her as that. In life in the passing lane is where I was coming from. As uh-huh. girlfriend, there was another girlfriend. I, you know something? It's been so long since I did those life Good. in the passing lane. Good. I don't even remember my own life anymore. Good, <laughs> okay. It's really good. You should listen one time. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 well, I, I've thought about, I had to go back and listen to the last couple episodes to do the last couple episodes. You were going to do one about your cancer. Yeah, I did it. I did them all. Oh, oh, you haven't listened to them. <laughs> I listened to the one up to the cancer. I think you I lived through it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Shay. No, no, no. I'll just next time you bring up the hospital thing, I'll bring up that you never <laughs> listen to my life in the passing line. Every day. I live it. 
in reality. Well, you used to listen to me every day, but you don't anymore. Yeah. Well, because I'm doing things. Well, there we go. Life in the passing lane right there. See? It's really good. I know. Yeah. It's terrific. I've heard it. We're on Fridays. Huh? We what? miss March Fridays. You listen to it on Friday. What? We miss we miss Marjorie on Fridays. Oh, oh on the late on the late show, you mean? Yeah. yeah. We used to see her for a half hour every night. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not up that late anymore. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, that's that. So um let me see here. What else is there that I haven't uh, I every now and then I think about it. I gotta talk about that on Monday. I, I got four minutes. Yeah, you know, there are a lot of things in politics I can bring up, but I don't want to. You know, that's what this show's about. You know. This show is just about how about you, Charlie? Anything uh floating your boat that you thought about? Um no. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well. I haven't been watching the news lately, so I don't know. Oh, black hole, the black hole they yeah. Well what I've what I've what I've decided is I, I hate two things, MSNBC and Netflix. <clears throat> and and Marjorie has two things she loves. MSNBC and Netflix. <laughs> right, Marjorie? And your point is? Well, my point is at $20 a month, Netflix has ceased to become worth it. Let's hear it. What? Let's hear it. Let's hear what? What, what you're complaining about. The fact that there's nothing there. It's just a bunch of crap. Well, you, you were watch watching it with me. Did you guys finish the dark? Finish what? Dark? Did everybody watch Ozark? We're watching the last episode tonight. Because <laughs> I decided before I watched the end, I was going to start over, and oh. so I'm, I'm on episode. I'm on just started season three. Okay, like, now please. I, I watched the first two seasons. I couldn't. No, we didn't watch the first, first two seasons. We watched the first season, and, and then we started. We started the second season, but we just stopped watching it. We couldn't make it. Now, what, what are we missing? Is there something that we're missing here? Well, I mean, I always, you know, I would watch it when it would come out, but there would always be such a big chunk in the middle that I would, right. I just, and also it started five years ago. So I, I think my life was so different. My daughter was still at home. I think I was real distracted a lot. So I'm getting so much more out of it. Like all these little, little details that I missed. Mm. But I'm like, oh, that's why this happened. I mean, maybe we should go back and watch it, Marjorie. You can. Thank you very much. <laughs> you know what happens? I then go, I you know, I just found out, Marjorie, I watched every episode and it's terrific. She said, okay, you have to watch it with me again. Uh, and then I have to watch something again in order to get I her to watch Peaky it. Blinders. I watched Peaky Blinders with you again. Yes, but you didn't understand Peaky Blinders till I said, put on the subtitles. <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, that's something we do with a lot of British shows. We put on the subtitles. I have always, to. Always. Some I of that to. stuff you cannot understand. You have to put the subtitles on, man. They Somebody do. once said to me, people don't realize the, Br the British speak a different language. They do. Mm. They do. You know, it's just that it it's, has a lot of crossovers to our language, and that's why we don't feel. And I feel you got to watch Peaky Blinders with subtitles. It's so much uh, better. You know? And I watched it a second time, Alex, because of you. Because I didn't <laughs> watch it because I couldn't. I couldn't take it because it was hard to understand. And then when I put on the subtitles, you you said, "Oh, I get it now." See, I mean, and so I actually helped you enjoy it better. No, I watched it a second time with you. That's all. The point that I was going to make about Netflix was that I was going to watch Ozark and then I was going to cancel my Netflix. Uh -huh. you, you know, that's what you should do. You should watch what you want to watch. Two free it. weeks and then get rid of it. Or not even get two weeks. Pay the month. Once it's over with, you can get out of it. Watch all the <laughs> stuff you want to watch. Binge watch all you want to watch. Get rid of Netflix and come back about five months later and see what there is and yeah. binge watch all that stuff and then get rid of it for another five months. All right, we could try that. I get it free with T-Mobile, so I, you know, it works. I don't even think about oh, it. oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, but you know what you don't get? You don't get the service that gives you 4K. Uh, well, I don't need 4K. Man. Yeah. I have a, we get I have a black room. In fact, they're the only they're the only company that's charging extra for 4K. 5K. 4K. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
there's, 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 oh, she, meant, she meant 5G, I think. Yeah. 5G, that's the phone <laughs> thing. Hey, uh, uh, Mark, they all die at the end. The last episode. Uh, of- <laughs> Everybody- stop it. Stop the it. last episode of what? Then, what was the show you we both <laughs> watched last week and you go, I have to watch it again with Marjorie because you enjoyed it. What? What, was that? what was that? It was some, something on one of the um, channel, you know, cable, not cable. Yeah, yeah. But there was some show that we both watched episode one. Now I can't remember what it is. Yeah, but we liked it, right? Yeah, yeah, because you said I have to you know I'm gonna have to have Marjorie watch it with me. We watched something new this week. Maybe that was it. Could be. I can't remember what it was. <laughs> it was like this. Marjorie and I have a singular social life. It goes something like this. <laughs> What's on tonight? No, no. Do we have anything we can watch together? Together. Yeah. Yeah. And if I can't she can't find anything that we can watch together, she then watches, I don't know, some Turkish soap opera or something. <laughs> well, yeah, but you know me, I watch my Australian cooking show every night. By the way, Brian, Brian, have you gotten enough of Marjorie and I arguing to take care of you for this Friday night? Yeah, I'll just watch it back the first half hour. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get on till the twenty she, after. She wasn't there. Yeah, she was out yeah. getting a four-hour dental appointment. She anyway, hey, listen, we're running, we're running o- overtime here, and uh, I, I just want to thank you all for joining me again here. I enjoy Mondays. I look forward to Mondays. A little light on people here right now, but you know that's okay. It's all right. Yeah. Hopefully we were good enough. You know, yeah. exactly. oh, yeah. Thank yeah. you, Mandy. I mean, let's, let's, let's all call in five minutes late next week and see what he says. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know about you guys. I haven't been called light in years. I'm delighted by that comment. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I want to thank Mandy for being here. Thank you, Mandy. Looks like everything's sunny and bright outside in it's Georgia. It's gorgeous today. Yes, it, it's you. gorgeous today. Today here in New York, it was raining. It was thunderstorms. Gorgeous. We had thunderstorms. Uh, and uh, Shecky, thank you once again. Uh, I will call you in a couple of minutes because I have to go get my phone. Uh, and and oh, and um, Mike Chisholm, thank you so much. Len LaFrisco, Marjorie Miller, my lovely and attractive wife, who I'll, I will forever feel guilty for never pick for not picking up at the hospital. As you should. As <laughs> Did I pay for the cab at least? I don't remember. I was. Okay. Hoping- well, the, I'm day. sure if you had to pay for it, I would have heard about it. Charlie, <laughs> thank you so much. Always good seeing Charlie here. Uh, and of course, Brian, uh, who is lying in his hotel room. I always hate staying in hotel rooms. I Where's your leaving. phone, Brian? Huh? He's, holding it. It He's holding it. He's holding it. He's holding it? Yeah, yeah. Anyway, hey, everybody, why don't you give a big wave goodbye? I'll give a big wave goodbye, and I'll sign off from here. Goodbye, everybody. We'll see you next Monday. Like said, Edward Berger. Oh, bye. Bye. Hey, Edward Berger has to sign off. Oh, oh, well, oh, oh, oh Edward. Oh, Edward. Oh, oh, that, that's <laughs> all, folks. Oh, my God. Try it again, Edward. Oh, sorry. Oh. That's all, folks. Okay. Okay. Wow. Everybody wave goodbye. That's worth the price of admission right there. <laughs> <laughs>